In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Uh, I'm just thinking that I will not preach about the millennium for a long, long time or the rapture because I preach about it hundreds of times. But look like uh, sometimes it's just the need of the people uh, and sometimes you're just discovering that or exploring this teaching for myself. Um, I received from uh, one dear to me a video about um, the, the Pope of Egypt uh, was attacked by one from uh, the Muslim uh, faith. Uh, and he's trying to make the Pope wrong into his face and the Christian wrong in their face. And the millennium is something like, it, if they make it wrong for this, they make it wrong for everything. We're just gonna come to that uh, in the end. But I mean, like you, you be uh, ignorant is something and you ruin, you know, the, the face of others, that's something else. So I heard as well, you know, the answer of the Pope uh, of Egypt. He probably was answering to such stupid accusation uh, very wisely. I love the, the way that he answered it. <clears throat> but on the same time, you know, the mistake of not knowing why God did that and you do not know the, the timeline uh, can give um, a very a very costly for the church. But let us go, you know, into more um, word of God, because the word of God that the man who keep my saying, he shall never see death. You keep the word of God in your heart. Uh, whoever lives and believe in me, he shall never die. We're talking about eternal life. We're talking to the Christian, we're talking to the Muslim. And the reason the Muslim are uh, reading from us, and, and I speak to the Pope uh, Tawadros, and I want to give him the responsibility. Uh, I love the word that you answered, but you have the responsibility of all the Muslim world of the Middle East. Why? Because they have nothing to know or to search for the future. And the future is very, very dark and very scary for the people who don't have the, 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 the truth or the knowledge of how they can be saved. So for us as Egyptian, and this guy in his video, I'm gonna get you his uh, 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 clip later or whatever his part um, he's from, and I'll show you the picture because I really don't care about what he said, you know, it's just like, why continue to talk to the Muslim that are on your level? Why do you go to our things? This is from al hadith you know, of that guy. I have another thing for him. Where is it? Uh, sorry, I just have to be more. But he is not, you know, the main thing that I'm going to talk about. Yeah, it's from a da'wah al islamiya So I'm just talking to the da'wah islamiya which is an Islamic calling. Just keep your Islamic things. Because you have no book to speak from it, you don't have prophecies, and you really need to be learned from the people who can teach you. So don't really criticize your teacher, you know. And the the, the, the Pope keeps saying that the Orthodox Church is the established old church, and that's truth. But for us as people lived in Egypt and live the suffering of the Islamic thing, and on the same time we have an advantage. We know how they think. We lived with them in peace, but the main important that we speak their language. We speak proper language, grammatical, and between the line we understand them, they understand us. And they don't go and listen to the Pope of uh, Rome, all the Middle East and the Islamic nation. Their life, death and life is in the hand of the Orthodox Egyptian church, which means the Pope Tawadros is responsible to eliminate them not only to look after the church, because many of them were Christian before, and many of them will return back to uh, the faith. So I, I, I pray that this, you know, can calm his heart, that that stupid, uh, whoever he is, or da'wah Islami, or whatever they are, uh, they, they, you don't worry about what they say. They're trying to make the Christianity shaking and whatever. But let's talk about what they do not know. They deny the, the millennium, and of course, millennium, it's not salvation as you may think, but it is salvation as well. Um, and the reason that these Muslims are attacking <clears throat> uh, the Christian faith into that because it's that part of the millennium 
the church do not know how to answer it. And he said that the first three, uh, 300 years, the church and, and apostle Paul, uh, uh, Paul, which is like the head of the church of that time, was believing in the millennium. How come that the church of today do not believe in it? So he's trying to shake all the faith. And, and uh, I received from other friend as well, something very, very strange. They're making a Kaaba here into, uh, into Sydney a few days ago. Uh, before then, the Muslim were doing, you know, that Muqa'ab, um, which is all square designed. Uh, and they're doing it into one of the biggest, uh, tallest, uh, you know, 400 meters, as you can see in, in Saudi Arabia. So what's the story of this Muqa'ab? When they're taking it, like I said before, from uh, Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem coming from heaven. And, and what makes me really uh, take responsibility of this is like the Muslim read the Bible more than the Christian, more than the Orthodox, which should be teaching them. But it, how can you teach if you do not know? And the church has been confused. And the reason is because they do not know what to answer what's regarding Israel. And today we're going to talk about that. So this is Muqa'ab that they're trying to do. This is like an MP or something. I just didn't know what it is. I received that from a friend. He's doing, you know, meeting of all the people, as you can see quickly, from different faiths. And they're uniting them into, uh, you know, uh, this to go for one world religion. Not our topic today. Our topic is millennium. But here you can see the Muslim are trying to get one religion and whatever, but they don't come to the truth to be eliminated. They don't come to the truth to know what is gonna happen in the end time. But let me tell you uh, what is the millennium things. But before then, just a quick, if you're gonna turn my video away, um, that's only the word of God. When it's open, it open in shower, in many. What the Lord Jesus gave himself as a sacrifice eternal and was accepted by the Father before you turn your challenge. So the 10 commandments you can come through Lord Jesus and enter into the place where you can be accepted. So he said that I'll go and do a house for you. And when your house is ready, I'll come back and take you. So the 10 commandments were fulfilled into our Christ. And, and uh, James, we talked about it last time, uh, calling the royal law or the law of liberty. The law of, what is it? The royal law, law of liberty is love one another as you love yourself. Christianity is another dimension that not many people can have it. But today I pray for any Muslim who can follow this teaching today, answering the da'wah Islamiya, And for the Orthodox people, they have to take responsibility nowadays and to learn their book. Jesus is removing the blindness from many eyes and he touching people. The people are looking for Jesus or for a savior or for salvation everywhere into their religion or outside the religion. And Christ is preparing, is looking, is his bride face to face, eye to eye, and picking the one who gonna be uh, there for him. Because this, you know, gonna start to be like really very quick, suddenly. You know, like four days ago, this uh, Muqa'ab, which is a Kaaba, Kaaba. I don't want to lose time when we're talking about these things, but the Muslims are advancing and trying to make a point and to do the things. When I declare heavenly that the time of, of the Muslim is done and their empire is done and, and it start by the, the, the movement which happened into the uh, Gaza and all that by a creep on all Mount Sa'ir and others. So you better jump into the faith and enter and know your savior instead of losing your time to disprove the Christianity or prove your religion because nothing into your religion can save you. The Christ now he's looking face to face to his bride and you can be one of his bride. You can be one of the people who are really trying to know the truth through the Christian face to criticize them and then the truth will visit you through Jesus Christ, the truth, the only truth. Because judgment is coming and you cannot escape. Jesus said, follow me. So he's taking us to a place of great joy to heavenly Jer Jerusalem, uh, where the tree of life on the two sides. And I just found beautiful picture to share, taking us to the throne and let us enjoy. So he is just coming. So if you wanna uh, take the video off, it's up to you. Jesus is coming and he's coming soon. Many people will enter, but 
many people will not enter. And um, uh, yeah, so here is the bride, which is all of us. So it's not like the Muslim, uh, you know, religion, weddings and all that men marry five. No, it means all of us going to be related to God. And he's very proud of looking at us and enjoying his children. He is receiving us to him. So don't take it into the sense of the Islamic religion sense. But there is some people on the same time, very idiot and very stupid. Uh, they think they can preach. Oh, no. Who's preaching the lie of the secret rapture? Secret rapture. He call it secret rapture because he don't read the Bible and he don't understand any secret rapture chicken came from the papacy. These people are Christian and preach. And I just want, I put that uh, line of that picture of, uh, you know, the and, and copy it and study it. But we're going to go why we need millennium, because that's important. You know, not only giving you some Bible verse, but in the beginning of this, this is the revelation. So it's called revelation. The word of God into that book is not book of symbolism. Christian, it's not book orthodox. It's not book of symbolism. It's a book of revelation. And it's not any revelation. This is a revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show us, to show into his servant things that must come shortly to pass. So he's trying to reveal what's going to happen to us soon. And very soon it's going to happen. And if we don't know it, it's not a book of symbolism and whatever and wars, which are like all oh, the Star Wars and, and create. No, 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 no. Every word will happen as it said exactly. And if you miss it, it's your chance that you had a book with telling you in details and you let the dust go to it, or you disbelieve it because you're born in other religion. This is the only book of truth, and it's called the book of revelation of Jesus Christ, that God has given it to John, his servant, because he wanted to explain to him things will happen soon. And, uh, and, and he said something very interesting. The Orthodox Church read all the time, you know, the book of Psalm every day, one of the readings. But see what he's saying here. Blessed is he that read that hear the word of this prophecy and keep those things which are written into there because the time is at hand. So every time you read that book, instead of reading just the, the, the um, Psalms, read this because every time you will have a blessing. It's the only book in the Bible. Every time you read it, you get a blessing. And every time you hear the words, you get a blessing. And every time you keep it and meditate and know about it, it's a book of blessing. So Christian Orthodox is not book of symbolism. Well, it was said, uh, according to that guy, Da'wa uh, al-Islamiyya, that the Christians say, oh, all the book is symbolism except that chapter, which is chapter 20 of Book of the Millennium. That's stupidity. Nothing into the word have uh, 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 symbolism. And if it was symbolism into the Old Testament, it's revelation into the New Testament. But let me show you that four times into that book, God is saying this is the truth word of God it's not symbolic from the chapter one write these things which you have seen and things which are the things which shall be after this write them down things yet happening and it will happen and in the end of the book he say and he said unto me these things are faithful and true it's not something symbolic or imaginary and to show unto his servant the things which must shortly be done beginning of the book, end of the book, another two times in the middle. Um, and he said unto me, right, blessed are which called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are true saying of God. No symbolism. These are true words of God. Chapter 29, for these words are true and faithful. So brother and sister, drop symbolism because it has no meaning. It means like you understand nothing. And I'm going to tell you why we have to have the millennium. Why? Here is a guy, uh, the, the disciple said to Jesus, Lord, is it at this time that you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus answered them differently. You see, guys, here, the book, the millennium is for the fulfilling of the prophecy and the promises that God gave to Abraham and to every one of the Israelites. 
none of the promises were fulfilled. None. That's why the Jews take the advantage of this and say the, the, um, uh, Jesus Christ is not the Messiah because all he promised us into the Old Testament is not fulfilled. How can this be a symbolism? He has to fulfill the faithfulness of God, the promises that he gave. That's why there is the millennium, that age, when God is fulfilling every little promise to the biggest promise. Otherwise, he's not God that you can follow. Understand that because you don't go for any stupid idea. And here is the promises to Israel and to the faithfulness of God. He has to prove that he is faithful. If he is not faithful, why we follow him? He's going to deceive us. And that's what the Muslim guy was trying to do. He didn't say the truth in this. Why do you expect him to say the truth to you into the end? He was shaking. And, and the Pope said to him, God established the church. May God, this is one of the major prayer of the church. The Lord established the, the, the foundation of the church. A regular prayer was said every time into the Orthodox church. So that guy, he is really, he can just go and play in the dust. That's his level. Da'wah Islamiya or Da'wah or whatever. Don't dare. Because an ignorant cannot really go for that jeweler. You have to have a level of understanding. But you have none. Because if you had a little bit of understanding, you would find Jesus. Jesus is the common logic. If you, know, if you are a good mathematician, you find no explanation into this equation except Jesus, except the Trinity. Try to make it in a different way. It's not going to work. Ask Einstein, he will tell you. You know, the atomic bond was called the Trinity. So... Here is, has God rejected his people? Roman 11, 1, no way. Problem of the church, that replacement theory, they think they are Israel, but they are not. Because there is horrible things that are going to happen into the church for, for time before the millennium. The church don't want to deny it, so they make it symbolic. And they wanted to get the blessing. We are Israel taking the blessing and drop the, the, the baggage of problem. God has to fulfill every promise. Promise to... Israel and to Abraham one of them here let's start see behold a king will reign so I'm gonna get you the promises of the Old Testament I did you know many teaching about that please go and log because I, I don't like repeat but I'm showing you different angle behold a king will reign in righteousness and princes will rule in justice tell me how can this be symbolic or where into the timeline that there was a king with reign in justice and princes ruling justice. Is this David? No. And big no. Because this prophecy exactly is repeated into the New Testament. So understand that God has to fulfill the promises. That's why the millennium. And, and understand the simple equation. He makes seven days of, millennia, of uh, creation. And in the seventh day, God rests. So the rest of God in the millennium, when he come and rule 6,000 years of human life, and on the 7,000, God will have a 1,000. And see how they, they really, the story that they say, if you say to 10 years old, he will argue about it. It has no even reason. It proves that they understand nothing about nothing, and they better be shut up. So here a king will reign, and other princes will rule in justice. This is very powerful, the prophecy of, of Isaiah 32. And here is another uh, one, you know, in Isaiah, yeah, er, er, that's the ruling of the Messiah, ruling on earth. Um, I just have to tell you here that the millennium is thousand years of reign of Christ on earth, on earth. You like it, it's not allegoric, it's not figurative, it's not, uh, it's a literal, it is physical reign of Christ on earth. And, and we're going to go now and find it into Revelation 5, the word reign on earth. Six times the word millennium in, in the millennium kingdom, the thousand years time was given. So it's not like they say, oh, it is one day with the Lord, a thousand years and all that rubbishness. God is very precise. When he didn't want to tell time, he said time and time and half a time. So we don't know what is the time means. It means years, it means 10 years, it means whatever. But when he say thousand years, 
six times or five times in one chapter, don't dare to make it figurative unless you're really superficial and you reap that you do not know anything. Millennium reign is on earth and Jesus will reign. So here is six times thousand uh, and you can see it here. Uh, it's all into the chapter of 20th of the book of Revelation. But when you go and read into a last few chapter or last chapter at least or the closure of every book of the Old Testament, he's talking about the restoration of Israel and the peace time that will come that didn't happen. So mean God is liar. Would you like to say that? I will now say Hasha. No way. Every small promise, big or small, he will fulfill. And we're going to go into a, quickly an idea what the millennium look like. So he said here, uh, six times, an angel had the key of, let, let me show you. He has a big chain and it's only one angel. Well, before then in chapter uh, 12, there was an engagement between the angel Michael. Michael, my darling, the angel Michael and his... Uh, 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 his angel that went and make a fight with uh, Satan and his fallen angel. And he went. But then he went and harassed the woman, which gave birth to the child. This is a different time. But that one is only one angel. The millennium is about only one angel. And he's going to get that devil and put him in chain and lock him. So we go here and say an angel from heaven, say having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand lay hold of the dragon, which is the old serpent, which is the devil, Satan. This is his other name. So exactly he's describing who he is and bound him for a thousand year. See, this is first time he's saying it. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him. He should not deceive the nations anymore till the thousand years should be fulfilled another time. He could say a time or a period, but God, when he says something once, he do it. If he say it twice, it means surely it is done. How about when you repeat in one thing six times and you still want it to be figurative? Okay, then the, the, the coming of the Messiah will come upon you as a thief in the night and blame no one but yourself because truths were preached to you and you, and you turn the blind eye. You can come to me and I can fix your eyes if you like. But don't dare to make mic and talk about things that is not into your uh, area of expertise. You know, keep talking about Muhammad and those things. But dare not to talk about the eternal. You come to our book to know what our book is saying. It's good for you. Go and tell your people that, oh, Christ will come and he walk over the cross and die again. Keep telling them lies. But when you come here, if you're going to tell them that there is a Christ, which is the Messiah or the, the, the Jesus of the Christians, and he will come and rule in justice and in truth for a thousand years, why are they going to continue to follow your Muhammad? Is this what you're afraid? Or your fear is because they're talking about the restoration of Israel, that you want the Christian to preach against it and take side towards you because of the photophobe, the Islamophobia of the Christian orthodox faith in Egypt. Don't. Speak the truth and don't be afraid. Break that fear. They will need you. They will need you, Pope Tawadros, to tell them the truth. Because that book is only for people who can see. Without your glasses, you will not be able to understand the word of God. And those one who dare to attack the, these things and talk about it, they are not even know what is two and two in the end, how they calculate this into the time of God and you think of God. They will need someone like you to explain to them. So don't be afraid and read your book properly. There will be fulfillment for the Jews. So Christian of Egypt face, they don't have to be fair, fearful, you know, and, and hide. The church is not Israel. God will never deny Israel. Israel will have a big penalty and big slap. They will have atomic bomb to come back to God. Would you like to have that atomic bomb? Huh? Christian or Muslim or whatever. Be careful, guys. They will take the cup. They need to give it, you know, to take it, to return to their original faith. 
So don't be afraid. Just pick the truth. The church is a church and the, and the, the uh, Jewish are the Jewish people and the promises are fulfilled word by word into the millennium full stop. Cannot deny it. Go and, and preach your uh, theory about Christ to break the cross and and walk over it and this rubbishness that can convince your people. But if you are daring to hold that uh, book of truth, learn from the truth. It's the truth of God. Who get, because you're going to run everywhere and you will not know what's going to happen to you. Watch Hollywood movies. And see when they speak about the, the end time, the, the apocalypse, they put something incredible. Don't read the Bible. Read, watch those movies. And you see, oh, this is really real. And they call it, even with the name of the Bible, they say, this is the trump of the third angel. They're taking even the words of the Bible. So let someone who can understand and explain it to you. There is a millennium because God will fulfill all the promises and the punishment for the Jews to save them. And he will heal. And he's looking to you. You may be in a Muslim face. I wanted to come and be saved and dump whatever religion you had. Because there will be if one chance for you to save or not save. I was watching yesterday a movie which is horrible. I will encourage you to see it. It's called Greenland from Netflix. Greenland. It's about a comet who hit the earth. And suddenly people are partying and boom, 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 boom. And fire everywhere. And, and they put a place uh, like uh, bankers, you know, under the coal. Some people to get them into this, into American base. They're preparing when the atomic bomb hit. A certain uh, profession, they want to save them to be building the next future. And I cannot tell you how people were doing things. But watch something like this, and they call, oh, this is the Trump. This is going to kill the third of the earth. It's horrible. So watch the movie and see what they're talking about. But don't dare to call the Christian uh, word of God eternal lies or you, you play with them because they can hurt you, can hurt you. Da'wah Islamiyah, stay, stay in your Islam and be silent, shut up. And then he said here, and I saw thrones. Didn't that the prophecy of Isaiah 32 that they set upon and judgment will be given them. Those are the princes that he speak about. They rule in justice and righteousness. And I saw the, the, people, the souls of the one who are beheaded in the witness of Jesus for the word of God and for the worship of the beast. And, and then he said, and their hand, and they lived and reigned with Christ for thousand years. See, thousand years, one, thousand years, two, three, four, five, six times into the chapter in an orange highlight in front of you. And the rest of the dead lived not. How can this be figurative, guys? Is this like you, you, you had a dream and you awake and you come this, to me to describe your dream? This is the faithful and true word of God. Four or five times in the book of Revelation saying that. Symbolic. Symbolic war. Symbolic whatever. And, and now describe the first resurrection. What did he say? This is the first resurrection. So no, the dead will not be raised. Only the dead in Christ. They, this is the first resurrection. What are they going to say about the first resurrection if there is no millennium? I heard it from the, the assistant of the Pope. I don't know what's his name. Oh, the judgment and, and the, the of the saints and the evil and, and the end of the day and whatever, all in the same time. Bravo. That's because you don't read your Bible. The first resurrection, blessed are and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Such a second death has no power. There is something called second death, and there is something called first resurrection. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and reign, ruling and priesthood and reign and king with him for a thousand years. This is really a story that you cannot really say to a kid and, and what? And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And the argument that uh, these people, either from the Christian faith or from the Muslim, oh, God, come uh, reign Jesus for thousand years and make it end tragic. They don't understand why Satan is loose and get that tragedy end. 
because they're into the thousand years of the ruling of the, of the, uh, of the Messiah. There will be peace, there will be health, and people will live as they lived before in the time of the beginning, thousand years. They will, uh, they will sin, the people will have children, and all those children who born into the millennium, they have to be tested like everyone into the face. Will they decide for God or not? That's why that uh, release. And and by the way, I was always knowing that it's too war. And I just, my, uh, my uh, picture, there is a war called Armageddon and another war called Gog and Magog is two different things. The Armageddon is going to finish the existence and then uh, Gog and Magog is the end of the millennium thousand years different between them two different wars the Armageddon is uh, the the valley of Jezreel where all the nations will come uh, around uh, Jerusalem and that's probably the atomic bomb of uh, the people but this war here God will shower from heaven and he will finish them and then we'll go for eternity wide. So here is that picture, uh, which I describe it. It's not third coming and whatever, an invisible coming. Christ will come on the cloud. This is what Christians should be focusing in at any time. He came first on the Calvary. The rapture is the second second invisible coming, if, if that idiot preacher saying, uh, because people will not see him, but they will see the people who disappear in millions but then that will come at, uh, uh, in the end when Jesus will come with Jerusalem, with the saint, with him. And he will come rule with an iron rod for thousand years. And then with the end of the thousand years, the devil will be loose and they come against around Jerusalem. All this is figurative. You serious? And he will attack Jerusalem and all the, the camp of the saints and all that. And then there will be eternity. And here is the judgment, the white throne of the saints. But let us go more into a little bit of more details. Uh, and sorry if I have a tone, but because you know, this is, uh, you wanna die and not to be saved, okay. But don't ruin the church, don't attack. Because he's the apple of his eye. You don't want to have that calamity coming upon you. So we uh, read exactly now what's the story. Look at those um, uh, promises of the Old Testament. So you know that the millennium is not chapter 20 of the book of Revelation. And it's figurative as you wanted to say. And God will not end his time with the tragedy of Satan. No, he will give the chance for everyone equal uh, way to pick I want Christ and Christ alone. That's why Jesus went into the hell to preach the gospel for them. And the one who accepted him, all the people who died before Christ. Where do you think, you know, Jesus was on those three days? He was preaching for the people who died. But here, let's see uh, things here. In Zechariah 8, this is beautiful. If a book of Zechariah, someone described it and I found it very uh, inter interesting. It's like the book of Revelation in the Old Testament. It's talking about the atomic power and talking about the salvation and talking about how the nations will sin uh, the last chapter of 14. And, and, and so into the millennium, the people will sin. But there will be two different type of people. So here... We say, I have returned to Zion, that's the Lord saying, and I dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, which is called the city of faithful city and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Where is this? Is this figurative to you? Well, this is where uh, the, 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 the Jews didn't accept, you know, that Jesus is Messiah because this doesn't happen. But my answer for the Jews at least Jesus came and, and uh, fulfilled a salvation and after 2,000 years he's coming back. But you've been waiting for your Messiah 5,000 years. God help you. You're very faithful. If your Messiah didn't show up all that time and you still follow him. But here he's going to get a, a, a spirit of grace and, and uh, please or, and supplication will fall and everyone will mourn. How is this going to happen figurative? People will mourn. Uh, because they see the one that they pierced. This is very, very um, detailed uh, 
uh, event into the Old Testament is talking about the millennium reign of the Messiah. When they see him, that will be saved as a nation. No doubt about it. And restored to the land under rule of the Messiah. So the Bible speaks of a condition, the millennium, which is they're going to be a perfect environment, physical and spiritual, and a time of peace. Not only peace, but there will be justice and righteousness, ruling in justice and righteousness, and peace around the world. Um, and here in Micah is saying the same thing. Let us go to the mountain of the Lord. He will teach us of his ways and explain to us. This has never happened. So are those, this is figurative, this is something millennium uh, style of, you know, in the beginning when I didn't know the, the, the millennium style of prophecy, it was all confused in my mind. But then when I start to identify that timeline, I start to understand this prophecy is millennium. It's not going to be fulfilled in our time. And then you start to understand a bit more. So people are not waiting for the Messiah to come in the rapture. Or they do not know that there is a thousand years when Jesus will rule and only him. And they want to continue to follow Buddha or whatever and go and get one religion, all of us enter into the rubbishness of nothingness. No, now only him who going to rule and his people. He will make prince as um, king and as a priest. So here he decides dispute for strong nations far away. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation. This is a prophecy in Micah uh, 4, and I think it's repeated in Isaiah 2. Neither shall they learn war anymore. This is part never happened and never fulfilled. So if God put promises like this and he didn't fulfill it, then God that promises God is a liar. He has to fulfill all this. Israel has to come to the place of mourning and, uh, and, and be restored as a nation. He has to rule from Jerusalem as the king of all kings and restoring and teaching and there will be no war. These prophecies have not been fulfilled. And my people will dwell in a peaceful habitation and secure dwelling and in quiet resting place, Isaiah 32. They will live in peace. It didn't happen. God is promise should be fulfilled one by one. That's why we have a millennium reign. All the promises that he promised in the Old Testament has to be fulfilled. Nothing of this uh, is fulfilled yet. And see here the beauty of this. Let us do you know a little bit of dialogue with the Muslim uh, uh, geniuses. We call it the city of God. God called Jerusalem my city. He's saying here to uh, in, in the book of Isaiah 45, he said to him that he will build my city, my city, Jerusalem. He's talking to Cyrus, my city, call it my city. And if you decided to do whatever you want and you are messing with God of Israel, you're not fighting Israel. Israel is just uh, some people who had the opportunity to rule and they didn't rule into righteousness. They took the world into the Third World War, Second World War, and and, and all the, the, the First War. All the wars are coming because of them, all this calamity from them. They didn't uh, uh, commit what God was bringing them to be the light. And then he commissioned the Christian to be, you are the light of the world. But neither us or them commit this until the true light will come in the millennium and he will teach us of his way. How really to be faithful and truth. How really live in righteousness and justice. Why is saying to And I return to Zion and I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Are those promises fulfilled? No. When are they going to be fulfilled? If God say this and never happen, how are we going to sit in, in Jerusalem when we're talking about, oh, we'll die and go to heaven? Just listen, understand. All the tel test, uh, Old Testament are prophecies unfulfilled. Some of them are fulfilled into the first coming of Christ and many of them of the second coming are not fulfilled. And I shall be called the city of truth, mountain of the Lord, the host mountain of God, Zechariah, Isaiah. All of them are talking the same language as if they had, you know, hacked into the sight of each other. Joel, look at this one. 
Uh, and now here is the main main of uh, this is I heard it that the main reason of the war uh, of uh, October they wanted to divide the lands and God warned about this. So Muslim around the world listen to that word of prophecy. It is not warning from Israel. It's warning of God, Yahweh, the ruler, the creator, and the judge. I will gather all the nation. So if you do this, the last part of this, the verse, God will gather all the nation. It means Armageddon war. And I will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is uh, the, the, the place when the war will happen. And I will fight with them. God will fight with all those nations. Therefore, my people and for my inheritance, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nation and divided my land. God is against the two nations that you wanted to try to achieve. Read it. It's not Netanyahu. It's not uh, 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 Israel. It's none of them. God has a nation called Israel. He has Jerusalem, his city, and you are deciding to divide it. And God stop it. And the war, according to what I heard, they're trying to make this war so they get that topic again of dividing the land of God. And that warning, the, the, the coming back to that decision, uh, what is it, the International uh, United Nation? Listen to this Bible verse and read it, Joel 3, 2. If you decide to decide the nation, into two, divide the land of God, Jerusalem into two, or Israel, that's what's going to happen. The end of the world will come. God will gather the people into the valley of Jehoshaphat. You are coming with this decision that you wanted to think you are a good politician. You are not. You're an ignorant and idiot who do not have a book to read of the future. This is the book of the prophecies, which will about to happen for all the nation of the world. You believe in it or you don't, it doesn't matter. But better believe and be saved. Because the warning is there. If you decide to divide my land, I will bring all the nation, which is the event of the, uh, not Gog and Magog, Armageddon. I said there is two wars. And, and look at this one here. Uh, Mount Sa'ir is for the Mount of the Muslims. The most de desolate, and they cut off from it. Uh, he, no one will pass, coming or returning. I'll make room forever. And you see, so that's the fate of the Islam. It's written in 100. I spoke about it many times. So why you are stubborn idiots? Jesus will not come and, 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 and spit on the cross and die again. Jesus will come to rule and reign in justice and in truth and in peace for all the world, and his follower will be a prince, there will be a, a priest and kings. When he say, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and, we'll, and we will possess it. This is the, the Muslim saying, and God heard them saying this. So be careful, because these things is not written for the Jewish people. They didn't write it. They're not that capable of doing this. And it's not the writing of the Christian. It's the eternal word of God that you better listen to it. If you decide to divide the land at the plan that they were doing and God stop it because he didn't de decide that the time of the end is there. Do not come to that decision. United Nations, Biden, whoever, England, Germany, whatever, Netanyahu, don't come to the dividing of the land or you are bringing the, 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 all the nation around the world. Joel 3.2. Um, and, and, and here, like I said to you, this is Armageddon and the great tribulation will start. Gog and Magog is in the end of the millennium. Um, and I just wanted to I put this quickly I because I want to scare you a little bit. You deserve to be scared, to be uh, shaken or awake for yourself because your Muhammad book and whatever book will not save you from those times. Revelation 19 and Revelation 22 event different. Revelation 19 is the Armageddon war. Revelation 20 is Gog and Magog war. Revelation in Armageddon, God will do some um, uh, party. Uh, he said, out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that will uh, uh, should smite the nations. 
So that's not smite some people, the nations, and rule with a rod of iron. That's the ruling of the millennium. And he treated with the one express. Are we recording? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, please, because I can't preach that again. It's too distressing. And I don't want to disrespect anyone. This is a, a love video for warning of the nation. Don't be too proud. The Lord is coming to you to talk to you face to face so you be saved. Don't continue in the lies of your religion or whatever. Either you're a Christian, not believing that the Messiah will come and rule or the, the Christ will come in, in an event called the secret rapture, if you, as those idiot preachers want to say. Or like you're in a Muslim trying to think, oh, Israel, whatever. Israel will repent after the atomic. And you guys has a chance now better than the time, better than Israel chance to repent and know the truth now and stop the lies that, that they lie to you. Because this is the eternal word of God. And, uh, you know, uh, on Saturday we had a ministry time outside and a guy was, uh, was a Muslim. I didn't know because he had a guitar on his back. And he's talking one of the preacher, you know, who was with us, you know, I keep talking, talking, talking. And then I put my ear to listen to what conversation. I said, oh, what's the diff? Why the, the book, the Old Testament? Why?" I said, the book, the Old Testament is the word of God concealed. But the book, New Testament is the word of God revealed. What religion? I said, I'm Muslim. I said, that's why you are not really uh, just like arguing and talking about now. You better listen to him. Because you have no way of salvation. He said, I'm deep uh, into the, the, the face. I said, oh, you be in deep darkness. Why you have a guitar? Muslim playing guitar now? What is it? You know, just shake yourself from the dust and, and save only you and your family before the time will come. Because the time will come as the thief of the night. And those saints that you are mocking them, shame on you. You are mocking the head of the Orthodox Church, the most established old church exists. And you think yourself smart? Didn't you learn from the past when you touched their pop before and got doom? Kill Sadat into his feast. Look at the past. When Abdel Nasser raised his hand and he, when he couldn't put it back in work again. You cannot touch the church and you think, Dawa Islamia continue into your religion and leave the Orthodox Church alone. Just go and send from them every feast, you know, a, a bombing church, whatever. That's all what you can do. But you are welcome to get the real faith. You're welcome to receive the Messiah who only can save you. Uh, in the war here, like we said, you know, um, there is something called the Supper of the Great God. It's different from the supper of the land, the, uh, the lamb. The supper of the great God, this is after the war, the atomic bomb, when people will gather in Jerusalem, in Yehoshaphat, and he will do this. And, and the, come and gather yourself. Why are he calling? The angel is calling all the fowls, all the birds. And they fly in the midst of, come and gather yourself together in the supper of the great God. Come and eat the flesh. And the remnant was slain by the sword of him, the sword of the Lord, set upon the horse, Jesus. The sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh that will eat the meat of uh, princes and kings and, and, uh, and all. It is described into Revelation 19. But you come into the Revelation 20, which is after the millennium. When the devil will be loosed and then he get, in, get all. And when the thousand years expire, Satan lose from his prison. He go and deceive the nations. Bigger deception. From the four quarter of the, the earth and the Lord is calling it here, Gog and Magog. So this is different from that one. To gather them together to battle. The number of whom is as the people who are coming against Israel and the children of God, sand of the sea, that's their number. And they went upon the breadth of the earth. It means the war will be everywhere. Don't think you are in Australia and New Zealand, you're safe. And he compares the camp of the saints about the beloved city. How all this can be for you figurative? 
how dumb can be dumb. And fire came down from God from heaven. This is a different one, devouring them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. He, the devil will be cast and who else? And the beast and the false prophet shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. 19 and 20. This event of Gog and Magog is into the end of the millennium, where this one is in the beginning of the millennium. Two events, thousand years apart. This is called the second lake of uh, fire, which is the second death, uh, which the Egyptians know about it very well, the book of death here. And, uh, and, and here is established after that, the great white throne, when I saw the dead and the books were opened. And another book was open, the book of life. So if your name is in the book of life of Christ, the Savior, he take your place like I've shown you in the beginning, then your books will not be uh, showing any evil record. And the dead were judged what is written according to the books, to the evil that you did into your lifetime and according to what they had done. And, uh, and the sea will give the dead. This is about the book of the dead. See how many times? One, two, three, four. This is the book of the dead of the pharaohs. Uh, and death and hates will be give, give up the dead. So death and hate is like two entity or two pers persons who were in them and they were judged, each one of them, according to what he had done. Death and hate were thrown. So in the last, in the few verses before, there was uh, the Antichrist, which is the the, uh, the beast and the false prophet and Satan. They were cast first, but here again, this is uh, after them will be everyone who they didn't find the name into the book of life, but he has a book full of rubbishness that he did on earth. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And this is the second death, the lake of fire. And if every, if anyone name was not found written into the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. The only book of life is the life where Jesus put your name on it. And the books were opened. Who wanted to have his own secrets opened? If even you saying there is things that you're not proud of. Let me show you this. And this is to answer the Christian of the Orthodox faith. Uh, they, they believe that Jesus, his kingdom starts after the, the cross and all that. And we're living in the millennium. What shame on you. Did you see any of the, those promises that God said into the Old Testament are fulfilled in our lifetime? What are you talking about? But this is going to make the things very clear to you. Here is, you know, uh, an, a parable that Jesus said, a noble man went to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. So that's exactly what Jesus did. He received a kingdom. And calling of his servant, he gave them the 10 min uh, minas. So we take that parable and think of the 10 minas and the five and the three, and we forget the aim of that parable, which is, a noble or a king who wanted to receive for himself a kingdom. Did he receive it? No, not yet. See what happened. And he said to them, go engage in business until I come. That's the part that we understand, but the part that we do not see. But these citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we do not want this man to reign over us. That's exactly what happened 2,000 years ago. That that's the cry of humanity. We don't want Jesus to reign on us. Most of the people. Some received him and received their salvation and they'll have to follow him and that will be into the eternal joy of their Lord. But here is to make you understand. Yes, Jesus, when he died on the cross, he ruled over you if you allow him. He come to receive a kingdom or to yeah receive for himself a kingdom. Did he receive it? Not yet. So don't continue into that rubbishness. And why you call it thousand years and two thousand years now? Jesus didn't come. So your theory cannot stand. But now Satan and his angel look at this. There is two places that on the cross. I want to put your attention. I 
probably wanted to do more, but I won't because I, I feel like you're saturated. But listen here, guys. The, le the earth is not saved. And heaven is not saved. Humankind were saved on the cross. The Lord said to uh, uh, Adam, uh, I think that one, uh, Genesis 3, and said to Adam, you hearken, because you hearken the voice of Eve, your wife, and eaten from the tree, I commanded, you shall not eat of this curse is the ground for your sake. The ground is not saved on the cross. I say, why do you say that? You're too proud thinking you know everything. No, I'm going to give you Bible verse. Believe the word, don't believe me. So the curse of the ground and sorrow or bribes and, and, and uh, will uh, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. It's not going to be fruitful and, and go with the dew of heaven and all that anymore. You have to work it out with the, the, the sweat of your uh, eyebrows. So I'm telling you that the heaven is not saved on the cross. And the proof of it is the Apostle Paul in Romans 8, 8 is saying, because the creature itself, the creation, in another word, el khali'a means the creation, itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious, it shall, it's a future reference, liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and travail in pain together until now. Is this a good proof to you that Apostle Paul, who came after Jesus' cross, and he's saying that the groaning of the creation of the earth is not saved. And there's another one, again, right now enter the creation, uh, reflect the curse of sin, all the creation groan, uh, and us even, for in this we groan innocently, desiring to be closed upon with our house, which is from heaven. So we are still under that suffering. We had our redemption, we follow Christ, but the, the, the job is not done when except it is done when Christ will come and that salvation is, it's not like the Holy Spirit, the, the deposit or this, you will have it whole. So we are waiting, all the children of God waiting and traveling and the creation of God is waiting and traveling. And uh, the earth will be saved on that time. And that's why in Revelation 12, listen to this. This is here, the salvation of the earth. So from those two verses, I read that the curse was on the earth and, and the redemption didn't happen even after pa Apostle Paul time. But in Revelation 12, something happened. Therefore, I call it the re redemption of the, the heaven. I give it that title. That's my explanation to it. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and that you dwell in it. Why the heaven has to rejoice? Wow to inhabitant of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child, which is Jesus. He's talking about Israel as a nation. Is not talking about the church. The church didn't uh, have a child, boy, or man. That's Israel. So don't confuse yourself with all uh, the confusion you have. So, so here is saying that the earth is delivered. The heaven is delivered from the devil and his effect is falling on the ground. And that part of the kingdom of the, um, not he is the, the prince of the air and all those uh, uh, things that is not, but this one will be physical evidence and presence of the devil and his army on earth from Revelation 12. And then the war against the woman, uh, against Israel will be on the top and the Christian and, and her children as well. But where is here? So here there is, if you understand the promises of God, uh, the promises to Israel, to all the Testament promises are not fulfilled. They are not fulfilled. The, the, all the, the, the prophecies about the, the coming of the Messiah, the millennium, will be fulfilled into the millennium. So when you get a promise that it, a peace will be there and whatever, uh, uh, 
So uh, let's see if we if we have this, you know, into the end of Zechariah, they say the people will come from year to year to the Feast of the Booth. And then they, if they don't come, there will be no war and no water. And he warned Egypt uh, about that. Uh, they have to go to the mountain of the house of the Lord and establish as the high mountain. And if they don't come, it means people will sin. In the millennium, nations will sin. They will not do the will of God. So the book of Zechariah is like the revelation of the Old of the New Testament. It's a book full of things. Uh, and Micah he said, the Lord will be the judge of the earth and there will be universal peace. I want you to see those promises. Have you seen them? No. When we are waiting for the Messiah to come and, and do that when we are in heaven, you're talking about promising here, but never fulfilled. That's why we need the thousand years of the kingdom of our Messiah. And Isaiah 9, he say, the mighty God, the eternal father, the prince of peace, he has a government. The government is on his shoulder. He's talking about him as the shepherd of Israel. You know, uh, there will be a, whole, a highway of holiness uh, that no one can enter it except the one who are holy. Believers only are allowed to enter into Jerusalem. Uh, this is into the highway of Isaiah 19. All those promises didn't, are not fulfilled. And that's not going to be fulfilled when we will are on, on heaven. These are all uh, earthly uh, promises that should be fulfilled because our God is just and he's faithful. Now the animal kingdom, I don't want to go into much detail. They will have peace among each other. Look at those references here. And, and they have peace with even the children and all that. Uh, and all the earth will know the Lord. Wow. Isaiah 11. And uh, vegetation, there will be water like never. There will be vegetation and fruits and, and, and uh, very, very, and the milk will flow in the stream. And famine will not exist. Vineyard will produce. You can see the reference in front of you. And spring will go from uh, the house of the Lord to water the valley. Water will come from Jerusalem, like the throne of God. We never seen this. And it's not going to be into the heaven things. So, and people will live with no sickness, disease, or miscarriage. And people, the blind will see, many people will be able to see because without that opening of your sight, you're going to continue to worship whatever God, and especially with the great deception, preparing for one world religion and having the Kaaba. And I thought the Muslim don't uh, worship, uh, uh, you know, idols and they have uh, a stone to, we have a cross, you know, they will have a stone. Bravo. And here in Sydney, and we have a big, big, big uh, mosque uh, around, you know, very close to it. It's like one of the, 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 the huge mosques I didn't see like it in Egypt. They are trying to take the land. But God will save us and take us before all those events. Not labor in vain. People will have um, blessing, no sickness, no miscarriage. All that will happen into the millennium. Uh, um, uh, and you can see the reference in front of you. Uh, so there will be people with immortal body, which will enter Jerusalem. With those one will reign and, and the people with mortal bodies. We're going to have children, like I said. That's why the end of the millennium, he has to lose Satan to do whatever on those nations. The nations will be judged accordingly. Because the nation will not be judged into the rapture. Okay, they still exist. But on that time, every nation will decide what they're going to do with the salvation that they will be opposing or opening the door for uh, Saudi Arabia, open her door for uh, the other nation. This is something on their plus, good for them, with that new king coming. Uh, need to make a decision to believe Christ as the Savior. Every nation every person born in the millennium. Otherwise, there is eternity in hell. 
um, and and God said, in, is, uh, this is showing you that this punishment will continue. In the end of the book of Isaiah is saying, and those who transgressed against me, you see, they warn not to die, they shall their fire be quenched and they shall be an abhorring old flesh. You see their carcasses here outside the city. Very specific. It's not heaven. Let us close. Oh, Father, I just pray that people will not be offended of my tone. Uh, my tone is full of love that the hour is come, that these eyes will be open and they'll come to you. They see you, their Messiah. And they open their eyes. Father, I pray that people will have an eye and sharpness to see the truth. And this mind will be open now, other from the Christian church, the church of Egypt, Baba Tawadros, and the, the, his helpers, other the Muslim faith who are trying to fog instead of really, they are really knowing a lot of truth, but in a fog way. So pray that their mind will be cleared and they will receive salvation. Christ is looking face to face to his beloved bride. And bride is not woman, it's every one of us. I pray that you can find yourself into that place where you are into the presence of God Almighty. When he come, you will be fine going into Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, the place where God, and you will be with him. You'll be one of those people who are going in numbers to be um, received by God. Just shake away all the, the rubbishness, all the lies. And let you see your creator and your judge. I pray that in the name of Jesus. If I offend any one of you, I'm not having no intention to offend anyone. I just have the heart that no one will be missing when Christ will come. Thank you.